Welcome to Understanding VSS. Now in the next couple of videos, we're going to turn our attention to a functionality and a technology that Microsoft's very proud of, and as a result, you're probably going to see it on the exam in a couple of forms. And of course, we're talking about VSS. And in this video, I want to talk about just some of the basics of VSS, get you comfortable with what it is, what it does, and that will really help you on some of the exam questions you're likely to see. Now, VSS stands for the Volume Shadow Copy Service. And what does it do for us? Well, it takes a snapshot of the file system at a point in time. It's almost like a frozen ghost image, if you know what that is. If not, don't worry about it. But this snapshot can be used to create backups very efficiently because we don't have to worry about locked files or locking files or any of that sort of thing because the snapshot can be used and it's not the actual working file. It's possible in some situations to use the snapshot as a read-only copy of a particular point in time. And it can sometimes even provide point in time recovery without the need to actually access any backup media. So there's a lot of cool things that can happen with VSS. One other functionality that's really neat, the VSS copies of a volume can even be mounted and accessed just like any other Windows volume. So VSS offers a lot of flexibility. Now it's not a silver bullet. It does have its weaknesses, but for now, let's just talk about what it is and what it does. Now VSS works a couple of ways. There's two methods. The first one is it will make a complete point in time copy of the data. In other words, it's going to make a complete copy as of say 1 a.m and it's taking that snapshot at 1 a.m. and anything that happens to that data after 1 a.m. is not included in that snapshot. Now that's going to be a relatively system intensive task because it has to make a complete copy of the data and it can take quite a bit of file space because it's going to duplicate the size of the data. Now the other method for VSS is that it will simply set a starting point and make copies of data changes after that point in time starts. The catch, if you will, with this method is that for VSS to ever restore to a point in time, it has to see the original data that hasn't changed yet. So don't let that confuse you. You can go out and read about it if you would like, but understand there's two ways that it's used. Now, here's kind of the rest of the story, if you will. There's a certain amount of VSS that's just built into Windows Server and it just works. The backup tools that you use in Windows Server are using VSS. Developers can build VSS into applications. There's an API for VSS. So it's being used all over the place. Now keep in mind, when we make copies of data changes after a point in time, that second method of VSS is very similar to a differential backup. Now, VSS, I've already mentioned, is a resource intensive service under some conditions. So you want to test this before you employ it. And just understand, it's going to take some resources to create that complete point in time copy of the data. Now, you want to make sure that your snapshot creation does not conflict with backups. If you do, you can get erroneous data in your VSS. All kind of things can happen to drive you nuts. So just make sure of that. Also, watch that storage space again. It does require storage space to store the snapshot. So there's a lot going on in VSS. In the next video, I'm going to talk about configuring VSS and what that really means. And you will no doubt see a question or two about configuring VSS on the exam. But this is one of those topics I would strongly urge you to go out and read a little bit about and just be comfortable with some of the ins and outs. I've pointed them out here, but it's probably worth 15, 20 minutes to go out and do a little bit of reading on your own. So that's the basics on VSS.